think I have a microphone. So there we go. Welcome. Would you please stand and for a word of prayer? Heavenly, delight in your presence here with us this morning, and we ask you to speak to us clearly from your word and feed us from your table and fill our hearts uh, with your presence and with the joy of worshiping you together in this place. We give this time to you in Christ's name. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading and hearing of God's word. A reading from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, beginning with the 11th verse. 
For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning with the 20th verse. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all and in all. The word of the Lord. Be uh, would you please now stand and join as we pray together for our children, present and all of our children. O oh, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, keep watch over our children in this unsteady and confusing world. Mercifully care for them and teach them that your ways give abundant life. And give them strength to stand firm in Christ Jesus our Lord, so that they might never know a day apart from you, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Now the darkness fades into you beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond all creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved when the earth gives way, for the risen one has overcome. And for every fear, there's an empty
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Reading from chapter 25, beginning at the 31st verse. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. And now, Father, come. Lord, uh, continue the work in our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Let your word be spoken this morning and your word alone received. We ask in Christ's name. What's the, what's the first line of that song, Carrie? Uh, when the darkness fades, it's a new beginning. 
there we are. The, the darkness is fading and a new beginning is here. I don't think they meant that. But the chance Purdue will be with you next Sunday and you're going to love it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say a little bit about uh, the future, my future, but um, I'd like to stick with the readings this morning and the sermon I prepared. I don't like crying in front of people and um, I'm sad to be leaving, uh, but let's, uh, let's focus on Jesus. Um, I belong to Becky, uh, my wife of almost 49 years, 49 years next month. And she belongs to me, uh, at least by virtue of a wedding service back in December of 1971, where God joined the two of us as one flesh. But how do you know that I belong to her? I mean, if you saw my daily life, would you know that I belong to Becky? Lou's nodding yes, and others, yes, I think you would. Uh, we're together a lot. Uh, when I'm off duty and frankly a lot of the time when I'm here uh, Becky is with me and I am with her we sleep in the same bed we have for 49 years unless one of us is sick I wear her wedding ring she wears mine as we have since 1971 we share all our assets we confer together on decisions we rely on each other at least I rely on her and she has found that I'm not so reliable but nevertheless we rely on each other we have children and grandchildren together, and importantly, we don't belong to anybody else except to the Lord Jesus. But let's say none of that were true except that wedding part back in 1971. What if we didn't live together under the same roof? What if I was always with another woman or women? What if barely, Becky and I barely spoke to each other, we were always apart, we didn't rely on each other, we didn't discuss things, we didn't consult, we didn't share our lives? Would you say that I belonged to her? Would that be true? My point is, I think we can only tell to whom or what someone belongs by how they live their lives, not by what they say, and not by some ritual or event of joining sometime in the past. I think that's true of marriage. I think it's true of a club or of the church. Are you? A member, do you belong? I'm on about this this morning because the scriptures peg our lives, our eternal life, on belonging, belonging to Jesus. And so it's important that we understand what belonging to him means. What does it mean and how can we know if we belong to Jesus? In the epistle this morning, Paul says how we have eternal life, how we're made alive, as, and part of the resurrection in eternity, which is, he says, through belonging to Jesus. Since Adam, the time of Adam and his fall, all are dead in sin, but those in Christ, Paul says, will be made alive. Christ, the first fruits of eternal life, and then at his return, all who belong to him are made alive. Paul says the same in his other letters, eternal life is belonging to Christ. <clears throat> Jesus spoke often of the need to belong to him, to be his disciples, his flock, the sheep of his pasture. I would say it's a New Testament shorthand for being saved, having eternal life, to belong to Jesus. And so the question today is how do we know if we belong to him? And what does it mean? What does it look like? Are there signs? Are there marks of being his? Last week we baptized Karis Schrock, a delight for me. And uh, after I poured water over her forehead, I made the sign of the cross on her forehead and I said, Karis, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Is that enough? Does she belong? to Jesus. Can we uh, expect you and I to show up at the pearly gates and they're, you know, they're closed, St. Peter's there, so can you open up to me? And he says, why should I let you in? And we, we wave our baptismal certificate? <laughs> Is that going to make it? My belonging <clears throat> to Becky is an analogy. It's not a perfect analogy, but I think it can be useful. The point of that analogy is to say we should be able to see that we belong to Jesus Christ 
by looking at our lives. Do they reflect, do they demonstrate that we are his? And I believe that's pretty much what Jesus is saying in the gospel reading this morning. I think that's the point of this gospel lesson. He's just describing the final judgment, the separation of the sheep and the goats, and he's saying that being his shows up in our lives. Now, this is bad news, this lesson for those claiming universal salvation, that all humanity is saved, we're all going to heaven. Jesus says, Jesus says taint so. Some, the sheep, the righteous, he calls them, blessed of God, get eternal life, and the goats get eternal hell. There really are two groups. At the end, the sheep of his fold who belong to him and get eternal life, and the goats who are not his who get eternal fire. And how does Jesus distinguish between them? Well, he distinguishes between them by looking at how they live their lives. The sheep demonstrate their place in his flock by a Christ-like character, by doing what Jesus did, by seeing a need in, around them and meeting that need in compassion, doing something about it. And the same thing for the goats, they showed, they proved that they were not his by lives which were not Christ-like, not doing what Jesus did. They saw a need, a, a, a problem around them, and they did nothing about it. Now, that leads to dangerous thinking, so you need to hear me carefully. It is not the good deeds that save the sheep, and it is not the lack of good deeds which curse the goats. That would be salvation by works. That would be we earn our way into heaven by doing the right things. And all of scripture repudiates that idea. The deeds or the lack of good deeds simply show to whom we belong. Those who belong to Christ will exhibit that belonging by how we live and particularly by how we love. We're saved. You know how we're saved, right? I think I've said it every Sunday. We say it in our liturgy every week, and you've heard it in this church for decades. We are saved, have eternal life by believing in Jesus Christ, by entrusting ourselves to him, knowing our sin and our need for a savior, accepting him as our savior. That's how we belong to him, by giving ourselves to him. But Jesus is saying, you really can't get to the end and expect to belong to him and still have lived your life the way you wanted to live it, your way, and not his way. If we live our lives as though we don't belong to him, at the end we may find we're a goat. In the words of James, uh, such so-called faith in Christ that has no life to prove it is dead faith it cannot save. So, in short, belonging to Jesus changes us. It changes who we are, it changes what we want. God, by his Holy Spirit within us, gives us a desire that wasn't there before, a desire to serve others, to be uh, helpful <laughs> to those in need, to be more unselfish, to be more self-sacrificing, more compassionate, more caring. Not perfectly, of course, none of, not, none of us get there perfectly, but to be more loving than we were before Jesus. There is no absolute standard, and this list that Jesus gives of good deeds, giving food or drink or clothing or welcoming strangers, visiting the sick and, and prisoners, that is not an exhaustive list. It's simply representative of a heart that knows Jesus Christ, a heart focused on others, the good of others, whatever it is that might be good for them, whatever they might need, and willing then at some cost to ourselves to meet that need. And of course, we must remember the greatest need of a human being. Jesus told us the first thing we need to do is to share the gospel, the good news of salvation through faith in Christ, to reach people with that news, to bring other people into his fold, into knowing him, to baptize them in his name, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the highest good. 
that's for eternity, that's the first focus. But if you've tried it with someone who's hungry or naked or <laughs> needy, destitute, without doing something about their immediate need, are they going to listen to you? Will they be able to hear you? If we're ignoring their immediate needs. Bottom line, I think uh, C.S. Lewis had it right. No one gets into hell by mistake. We get hell by choosing it. And it's not one choice at the end. Uh, I think maybe we have that image, you know, we're going to die, leave this life, and we'll be faced with the wall, and we two doorways, right? And one of them, you can see through there, there's fire and people screaming in agony and burning in the flames, and it's horrible, and through the other door you can see lightness and peace and joy and great music, and, and that's your choice. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously everybody's going to heaven, because who picked the flames? I don't know, that's not it. I wish it were so, but that's not it. Our final destination is not one choice, now or later. It is first a choice, yes, absolutely, a choice to belong to Jesus. And then it is seeking by his grace and the power of the Holy Spirit to live our lives as though it's true, as though we are his, his sheep, his people, as though we belong to him. It starts with a choice, a commitment, a decision, Karis made, to be baptized, to join. And then it is choice that's lived out, fulfilled, moment by moment, a thousand little choices, a million little choices, day by day, moment by moment to be his, to, to listen for his voice, to hear his voice, and then to obey what he says, to do what he asks. To, Jesus says his sheep know him, and they hear his voice. And so our job is to listen and to hear what he's asking and to obey. And if we struggle with that, with belonging to him or remaining belonging to him, hearing his voice and doing as he asks, and we all struggle with that, then I want to leave you with encouragement this morning. We have our reading from Ezekiel. Be encouraged. The good shepherd never gives up. Ezekiel says he seeks after us, pursues us, rescues us, goes after the lost, brings us back provides for us, feeds us, and he's always for us. And then he's given us these wonderful gifts that, that lead us, our, our miserable human beings, leads us, lead us into belonging to him more and more fully. His Holy Spirit within us, continually working in our hearts, drawing us more to him, continually forming our hearts into Christ's likeness. His Holy Spirit in us, his word, Holy Scripture, we can... We have that book, you know, we can immerse ourselves in that and through that immersion grow more and more to, in love with him and belonging to him. And we have prayer. What a gift. Our God is available 24-7 for us to talk to. How do we belong to him? How do I belong to Becky? We talk all the time. How do we belong to the Lord? We, we talk and listen. And of course we have his church, his body on earth in which we find support and encouragement and blessing and love and opportunity to serve, to move more and more in our lives to reflect that we are his. That is my prayer. I'm going to have a prayer at the end for you all, but uh, that's my prayer for Trinity Church that in this season ahead with Chance, your new rector, who will be with you next Sunday, that as a body, we will, you will, and we all will grow in our belonging uh, to Jesus Christ. Our lives more and more reflecting his life, more and more hearing what he's asking and able to do what he says. This is a wonderful church. I, I hope you know that. Um, it was wonderful when I got here, and uh, by the grace of God, I don't think it's diminished much. Um, it seems to be uh, vital and thriving, but it is a wonderful place. And if anybody says otherwise in your presence, you correct them and say, uh-uh, no, we've got a fine church, because you do. This is a wonderful place. 
And you have blessed me and Becky, we blessed us richly. And may you continue to grow in the depth and breadth and strength of your love of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for your work in this place, your work in our hearts, that you never give up. Help us, Father, to be yours in every sense of the word. In Christ's name, amen. We're going to sing? We are. Would you stand as we sing our words of commitment? pray for the church and for the world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley, our archbishop, and Mark, our bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our president for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection. In thanksgiving, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. You're invited to add your prayers, either silently or aloud. Priory and Bell. Father, we pray for Chance Purdue and his family as Ministry begins here in this church this coming week. I ask your anointing on him and uh, on Kelly as well and the children, your blessing, your protection, that he would at all moments hear your voice and seek your face, and that his ministry here would be uh, anointed of you and long lived and a blessing to many.
Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another, sharing God's peace. Uh, please be seated. Warm welcome to you all. I'm delighted to have you with us for worship today. Uh, a few quick announcements. Um, join us. Becky and I will be across the hall after the service. Uh, there are donuts. Don't come for us. Come for the donuts. I, we have we have lots of donuts. Um, and we'd love, love to have you and s chance to say goodbye. Um, I am go uh, going uh, off for a week uh, in Pennsylvania. Uh, Thanksgiving vacation with our family, although we're not going to be allowed in the house. But nevertheless, we're going. Um, they're, they're very cautious up there. I think that's it. Anyway, um, and then I'm going to work uh, back as, another, as an interim in another church uh, starting December 1st, uh, Church of the Holy Comforter in Sumter. Um, <clears throat> and I've been, I've pray that's very short. They say it will be. They're hoping to call a rector within six months. They've got a committee already up and running, and they've been briefed by the bishop, and so we're hopeful. And then we hope to be back here with you. Um, I ask for it. Uh, yes, that's no, so not an idle threat. Um, but we, we, uh, we love it here, Becky and I do, and we, we're counting on this being a church home after I get done. Then I'm, why am I going? Because the bishop asked. And when the bishop asks, that's kind of what I do. Uh, he's my bishop. And I, I love him and serve him. Um, we're going to be closed uh, Thursday and Friday, the offices. Um, and we're making wreaths next Sunday. Uh, please use your Connect card. Advent wreaths, uh, makings will be available uh, at the backside of the reception for Chance and Kelly, which is next Sunday. But we need to know if you want to make a wreath, so jot that down on your Connect card and let us know. Um, Carrie has some One announcements. Um, some of you know this is the third annual Pies for a Cause that Chloe Schroff has been doing. Um, so Chloe and Amy, could you stand up stand for up, us? Chloe. 
Today is your last chance to order a Thanksgiving pie. So if you want a pie made by these beautiful ladies, um, I can attest they're delicious um, and made with lots of love and, and the money goes to a good cause. See them after the service today. It's your last chance to order. Is that, so, is that Chloe and her chef or is that? <laughs> it's Chloe they and her sous together. chef. They work together, they yes. work together. Yes. So see them after the service to order your pie for this week. Is that it? Oh good, okay. I think that's it for me to uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Stand and sing with us, please. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, for you have seated him at your right hand in glory and put all things in subjection under his feet, that he may present them to you, O Father, 
perfectly restored in beauty, truth, and love. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. Apart from your grace, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us.
Amen. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Make me an offering, make me what 
us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. We're going to go off script this morning. Um, because it's Paul and Becky's last Sunday, we're going to ask Becky to come forward. And vestry members are going to come forward. And we just want to pray a prayer of blessing over them and a prayer of thanksgiving for their time um, serving here at Trinity. Um, Paul has actually chosen a special song blessing for us to sing as the recessional. Um, bef but before that, we want to pray a prayer of blessing over them. The song is a blessing on you all, not on us. Lots of blessings. Lots of blessings. Before we do, I just want to say one thing, Paul and Becky. I don't want to cry either. Um, it has been a blessing and a privilege to have you all here. Um, your humility has been so wonderful, and I would serve a thousand years with you in church leadership. It's been awesome. And so thank you so much for that. And Becky, thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, Father God, I thank you for uh, Paul and Becky. Father God, I thank you that not, they not only shared the gospel, but their lives with us as well. Um, Father God, I, I thank you for when we needed um, you the most. Um, you were here, um, and the message was declared, and the Holy Spirit was here through Paul and Becky. Um, I pray your blessings upon them, that you would watch over them as they, they go to Sumter, Father God, that he would travel there safely on a daily basis. Um, Father God, and I just I pray that you would be with them their family, that this time Thanksgiving would be wonderful, God, and I just thank you so much for them. Um, we love them, um, and we look forward to them returning. Um, it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
morning prayer comes from Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. Paul's prayer and Paul Peter's prayer. May this, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.